benchmarks for the lower version of AMD's RX 7900 series GPUs and not uh, spicy meatball. Elon's relaunch in Twitter blue and Google wants to fix Chrome. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the Internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is talking about some new benchmarks that are coming out about the 7900 XT, not the XTX. This is actually going to be covering the lower version. We had an episode earlier this week where we got XTX benchmarks and turns out the XT looks pretty good. AMD's telling the truth as far as what we're seeing on these leaked benchmarks, and it does look to be pretty admirable. So overall, what you should know is that the 7900 XT is about 10% slower than the XTX, which is kind of where everybody kind of assumed it would be. So that falls right in line. This is not the 30% difference that NVIDIA was trying to give us with the 4080 16 gig and the 4080 12 gig, which is now going to be the 4070 Ti and be priced at the same price point of the 7900 XT, which talk about why that's a terrible idea in just a second but it does look like they're within striking distance of one another and the 7900 xtx is just about 12 percent more expensive than the 7900 xt it kind of all translates into making financial sense and both of them having really good value performance if you're looking to spend 900 bucks the xt might be it and if you're looking to spend a grand it looks like the xtx so let's take a look at the open cl benchmarks this kind of demonstrates raw compute power and you can see that the 7900 XTX fell behind the 4080 and the 3090 Ti. And so the 7900 XT is going to fall a little bit further than that. However, as talked about, the OpenCL performance doesn't necessarily translate into gaming performance. In many games, the 6900 XT was going toe to toe with the RTX 3090, despite it being lower. The 6950 XT was going toe to toe with the 3090 Ti, despite it not really keeping pace on OpenCL. So in terms of video gaming, it could be a complete completely different story. And if we take a look at the Vulcan benchmark, it does appear to be that way. It goes RTX 4090 at the top by a large margin, but then you have the XTX and then the XT and then the RTX 4080 and then the RTX 3090 Ti. Now tell me where exactly the 3070 Ti is going to fall, probably just behind the 3090 Ti right here. So that's going to be the price point that Nvidia is going to bring the 4070 Ti in at, but it's not even going to come close to competing with the 7900 XT, which looks like it's going to beat the RTX 4080 in Vulcan performance. And if that translates to other APIs, looks like it's going to be a fine, mighty steal. Now, we are just about a few days away from the launch of these GPUs. And as we get closer, there are more details coming out. And it turns out that everybody who's not UFD tech got their GPUs to unbox yesterday. So we have a whole bunch of videos and pictures showing off the 7900 XTX and XT compared to things like the 4090 and the 4080 and the last gen 30 series founders edition and it turns out that yes they are indeed smaller however i will just like to caution everybody that we're just seeing the reference ones if you take a look at how a lot of these companies are designing their third party ones they're likely going to be the same size as the 40 series because it was just cheaper for them to slap the same cooler on the amd chip than it was for them to reconfigure the whole thing this won't apply for companies like asrock or xfx who are amd exclusive but you got companies like Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI, they likely will be roughly the same size just because, again, it is cheaper for them to just repurpose what we've got going on. But expect more benchmarks to be coming out as time progresses. Probably on Monday, we might have quite a few details a day before the GPUs go on sale. Probably the embargo will lift on that day, if I had to guess, which means that everybody's gonna be watching those videos instead of coming here and watching hot news, which means usually what happens in the background analytics, just so you know, is uh, if we release at the same time as an embargo, our views are flat and then the hour past the embargo, that's when we go up. But then we don't have any details on the reviews because we release the video as the embargo. It's a whole it's a whole game you gotta play here with your attention. You guys just don't watch two things at once. What the heck? And what the heck's going on in the crypto market? Bitcoin's up 2.2%, be at 17,179. Ethereum's up 4% to be at 1278. And Dogecoin's up 2.39% to be at 9.7 cents. And Reese is going to close out this week with some good UFD deals. They better be hot and spicy, my brew. Thankfully, thankfully, Reese's 
power station, his substation that he's near, is so degraded that they can no longer load shed it without causing severe damage. So he is not experiencing the stage six load shedding that's been going on lately because uh, everything's bad and falling apart where he lives. I'm so sorry, buddy. And I don't know if there's a better metaphor for me to segue into talking about Twitter and the relaunch of Twitter Blue, which is expected to take place today. And according to preliminary reports, because it hasn't come out yet, is that Twitter is going to be raising the price of Twitter Blue to $11 on iOS. But if you want to purchase it over on a web browser, it's going to cost you $7 a month. This is likely due to the fact that Elon just found out that Apple takes a 30% cut. Didn't know that was a thing, despite, you know, thinking that he could run a social media company where you're kind of dependent on the mobile traffic that's going on right there. It's hard to say whether or not this is going to impact the amount of people who sign up for Twitter Blue. The $11 price point is nearly a 50% increase in whether or not that's enough value for people to get out of it, to go onto their computers to subscribe to it, or just be like, I was gonna, but no, I'm not gonna go to my browser. But the changes in Twitter Blue are expected to have different color badges depending on what type of verified you are, and you're not gonna be able to change your username within the first seven days before signing up for Twitter Blue. And then if you do change your name, then you'll lose your badge so that they don't have a recurring situation of the whole like losing companies billions of dollars because they were faking that they were a different company and changing the tweets. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. Let me know if you're interested in signing up for Twitter Blue. But it's not just Twitter that's gonna be raising pricing. Disney launching their ad supported plan for $8 a month, but then raising the ad free versions by about $3 a month, which will be about $11 for the ad free version. In case you want to have that, it's just going to be more expensive overall. And what appears to be an expensive task right now is that Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition that's been going on and the FTC announcing that they are suing Microsoft to stop this merger, announcing that they believe that this is going to injure Microsoft's competitors, namely Sony, has been very vocally opposed to this deal, despite Microsoft's public assurances that they're not going to take Call of Duty away from Sony, which seems to be the real sticking point. But FTC saying Microsoft has already shown that it can and will withhold content from its gaming rivals. Today, we seek to stop Microsoft from gaining control over a leading independent game studio and using it to harm competition in multiple dynamic and fast growing gaming markets. This alluding to the fact that they acquired ZeniMax, Bethesda, and have already announced that games like Starfield or the Elder Scrolls 6 will not actually be available on other platforms. It will be Microsoft exclusives. So that's the general idea there. But it happened earlier in this week that Microsoft announced that they were partnering with a mobile handheld gaming console company in order to bring Call of Duty out to that, as well as the uh, poopy butthole company who they're going to do that with Valve not taking a deal on it, officially signing to it, saying that they actually trust Microsoft's intentions, but the poopy butthole company had to actually sign something. Additionally, Microsoft has been trying to allege that this is not about acquiring Call of Duty or Overwatch or any of those other games that Blizzard makes. This is actually about getting the uh, mobile market, okay? Because they're acquiring King because, you know, they got like Candy Crush Saga and we don't think Call of Duty is actually even worth it. So like, why, why do you even care? The FTC refuting that, saying that Activision is one of only a very small number of top video game developers in the world that create and publish high quality video games for multiple devices. And just going on to say that Microsoft is kind of full of crap when it comes to that point. And then additionally following up by saying with control over Activision's blockbuster franchises, Microsoft would have both the means and motive to harm competition by manipulating Activision's pricing, degrading Activision's game quality or player experience on rival consoles and gaming services, changing the terms and timing of access to Activision's content or withholding content from competitors entirely, resulting in harm to consumers, which I for my personal opinion, I do think Microsoft has shown that they're going to do that at some point. Signing the 10 year deals with different video game console makers shows that they are willing to at least try to give the good grace to get the deal in the first place. And they're playing the long game just like they were with Game Pass subscriptions. They're not looking at making money right now. They're looking at doing it and becoming the juggernaut of gaming in the next 10 to 20 years. Once those deals expire, they can pull it out and then they can have access to all of it, which whether or not, you know, call it of Duty and Overwatch are going to survive another decade, I guess could be up for debate. But I do think Sony's concern that Microsoft is going to screw them over long term is correct. But I don't know that Microsoft 
is willing to even do that immediately. So like, it's hard to say what the resolution actually is going to be, but Microsoft publicly responding to this FTC lawsuit by saying, we continue to believe that our deal to acquire Activision Blizzard will expand competition and create more opportunities for gamers and game developers. We've been committed since day one to addressing competition concerns, including by offering earlier this week proposed concessions to the FTC. While we believe in giving peace a chance, we have complete confidence in our case and welcome the opportunity to present it in court. So this is likely going to be a protracted battle, not clear on which side is going to come out ahead on this. But let me know what you think of Microsoft taking over and buying Activision Blizzard. Do you really think that this is beneficial to the gaming community as a whole? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. But Google wants to make Chrome beneficial to more people as a whole because they say that they're coming out with two new modes to make it less battery intensive as well as less memory intensive. So they will have a memory saver mode, which will allow you to reduce memory usage by up to 30 percent on desktop. And then battery saver mode should help to prevent battery level drops by 20%. And this will be part of the new M108 Chrome build for desktop in order to potentially help all of the memes about Chrome just eating all the RAM. Om nom 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 nom. If Chrome seems RAM, he has to eat it. Om nom 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 nom. And I'm nom nomming my way to the weekend because this episode of Hot News is over. I'll be back on Monday. Maybe. I don't know. The, the reviews are going to launch. It's a weird existential thing for hot news to launch things when we don't have access to the hardware to talk about the things that are the breaking news because we're just not on the radars.